grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one, uncreated, infinite, eternal, almighty God and Lord. This is the Catholic faith. Just for those who are concerned or confused uh, as to which service you connected to today, uh, that's Catholic with a small c which means that you go to its original basic word, which is, uh, we use, normally use the word Christian. And all Christian faiths, are all Christian uh, believers uh, throughout the world and throughout all time, this is what we believe. This is the creed that we have been a part of the church for 1,500 years. And it, it was an attempt to set down a discussion, a statement, a a statement of faith, a creed about this God and trying to explain as best the Scriptures tell us as to who and what God is and what He has done for us. Any time that you take a a look at a, a, at a faith group, one of the first things you need to take a look at is, what is their God? What do they say about their God? What do they profess? What do they teach? What do they live in relationship of, to that God? And from there, all the other ones, the doctrine of man, the doctrine of sin, the doctrine of, of living, the doctrine all, on down the line to all those kinds of, there's some great charts out there. I think the Moody Bible Institute is the one that I've been pulling up for years and years and years because it does this with, with the major faith groups and says, uh, it goes through all these doctrines and then uh, at the beginning as to what this group and this group and this group and this group feel about those kinds of things. Because not all faith groups who profess even to be Christian are in fact Christian. Because as the Athanasian Creed says, these are the things that you must believe or you are, <laughs> you're, belie- you're believing in the wrong things. Yeah. It's not easy because as I said before, the old word that was used instead of uh, uh, infinite was uh, incomprehensible. God only reveals to us through the Scriptures a little bit about Himself. But He reveals Himself as God Father, as Father He begat. That's a tough, song, a tough uh, thing for us to, to understand even in that, because how does God beget? But He said, in the Old Testament and in the New, Matthew and Luke particularly, where it gives the genealogy of Jesus from uh, Adam or from Noah, as it goes down through that, and, and you may recall, as it says, so-and-so begat so-and-so, and at such and such he gave, begat so-and-so, who begat so-and-so, who begat so-and-so, and on down the line, as it goes through the, the family, the line of promise from the Genesis 3.15 to Adam and Eve, or to, to the devil, that the seed of woman, the Christ, the appointed one, would come and would crush the head of Satan, who would uh, wound the heel of that seed. Well, uh, so the, the, the whole line is there, and it begat, and begat, and begat. And what did he begat? He begat his only begotten son. And that's what we say about the son. He is only begotten. The only begotten son of the father. And the other remaining was the Holy Spirit. And the word that describes his activity is that he proceeds. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. Uh, These things have have been debated, have been discussed, have been commented on uh, since, (laughs) since Jesus ascended and the Holy Spirit came. Uh, And 
Uh, and it has been like, for instance, the, I just, we talked about that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Filioque in Latin, and the Son. That one little word is one of the major divisions between the Eastern Christian churches and the Western Christian churches. So these words that are down in this creed are not just vague generalities. Uh, these particular words have put down because they have a great deal of background, a great deal of meaning and understanding. And it takes, it takes a lot of study. In fact, you can study the rest of your life and, and still have lifetimes to continue with it. Yeah. Even to read all the writings about the Athanasian Creed and its meaning is uh, uh, quite a task to undertake. But in the Scriptures, the Word of God, it talks about these things. And in, in the Old Testament lesson today, well, we, hopefully you noted those kind of things where it says that uh, God created the heaven and earth. And he says, uh, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God and the Word. John, in the Gospel in the New Testament, clarifies that. He says, as he begins the same way in his Gospel lesson, that Moses began with his beginning chapter, beginning book of Genesis. And John began, in the beginning uh, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, Jesus Christ. So every time it talks about, and God spoke, and God said, uh, it's Jesus, the big, only begotten Son of God, who is the Word. And of course, it is that Word that when He was then conceived by the Holy Spirit into the Virgin Mary, became man. And then, the highly debated, difficult to understand, is how is it now that this Jesus of Nazareth, but born in Bethlehem to the Virgin Mary, is both fully God and fully man? Because there, were, there are legends and, and all sorts of, of stories about uh, as people develop myths and ideas and concepts about the gods and, and, and they're coming and interacting with man and how all it works out. And, and they're just, and there's major controversies within our church throughout the history and those to this very day who do not believe that Jesus, even if he was a man, he certainly wasn't also God. But the creed puts that all into context. Just as then in the second reading today, as Peter on Pentecost uh, gave his sermon, we had part of it last week, we have another part of it today. But as he, it goes through, it's, it's all, you know, the, the words are there that, that God was involved in this, whole, uh, in this, in this process, uh, that in sending his son and so forth. And of course, the gospel lesson today uh, from Matthew's 28th chapter, uh, unlike what is noted in the bulletin today, but uh, from Matthew's 28th chapter, where it's interesting, did you notice that Jesus says, uh, baptize in the name, singular, in the name of the Son, uh, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A singular to understand that we have three distinct persons. A lot of study of the word, what person means, because it's changed also over the centuries. But we understand them as three distinct persons. Uh, there, well, basically, there's two ways of looking at, the, at God. There's what we talk about it, looking at it from the outside, as if one could do that. But the concept of God. And then within the concept of God is a trinity, the three persons. It's interesting, and each time where it talks about it, it talks about the trinity in unity and the unity 
and Trinity. It begins with the Trinity, the three persons, and their unity. And it fin finishes then with the unity of the Trinity. So that it, it is, it's saying from two different directions to say, it's just one. It does make it difficult, or not. I mean, it's a challenge that, that God's people have always had, and it's no less true today, is that it's very easy for others who trying to understand the relationship between that which is empirical to them and that which is not. And they try to explain how things happen beyond what is their comprehension. And, and usually they come to something outside that normally they develop a relationship to these entities or these concepts that gives them the opportunity to manipulate them. Incantations, sacrifices, actions, deeds, promises, bargains, contracts. The way a lot of people, in fact, still do today in relationship to this triune God. And, and its witness says, I went to church Sunday. And, and sometimes we can say that at great risk. How come you let all these things happen to me this week? I've been good. Well, okay. It, see, even in our sin, acquired sinful nature, nature of sinful flesh, we still explain things, develop concepts and understandings in our own way. That's, that's that sinful nature. And yet God tells us, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And I must ascend to the Father that we might send the Holy Spirit. There are many, 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 many texts in the Scriptures about these three persons and their relationship and their power, their, well, it's, it's all God. Anything that you, that you can attribute to one, attribute to the other. The, none of them are any less or greater than the other. Except Jesus, as it said, in his divinity, he is equal to the Father, but in his humanity, he is less than the Father but that's only because of his divine nature, which is both divine, or his two natures, divine and human nature. Yeah. <laughs> because theologians, both Christian and otherwise, can't understand that, they try to destroy that doctrine and that teaching. And it still goes on today. That's why there are, are many of the other faith groups that accuse Christianity of being idolatrous, having three gods. Well, the Athanasian Creed is not three gods, it's one god. It's not three, just one. On and on about all those kinds of things. This is, and the point of all of this is, this is what we worship. It talks about that. This is what we worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, the Trinity in unity, the unity in Trinity. It is incomprehensible, but there's a lot that the Scripture tells us about the persons and about God's relationship and what He has done for us. And that's why the second part of this deals with the person of the only begotten Son, Jesus of Nazareth by earthly name, the Messiah, the Christ. For he accomplished for us the forgiveness of all of our sins so that the only justice that we have is the justice that God grants us when he declares us to be his children which means he's declared us to be holy, righteous, perfect. And so when it comes down in describing the Catholic faith, 
when it says, those who have done good will enter in eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire, we say, oh, that's work righteousness. It's right there in the Athanasian Creed. No, because <laughs> scriptures are very clear. You don't have to search for it. Jesus himself talked about it. You remember the sheep and the goats? What Jesus, or what God told the sheep was, you did these good things. The goats, uh, the sheep didn't recognize, they didn't remember that. They, didn't, they were not even aware of it often. And they remember the goats. They said, what if we had known it was you who would have done those things? Ulterior motives. There's no ulterior motives when the Holy Spirit dwells within you and He does through us the good works that God sees. So not only did God create us and take care of us since Adam to now with His Word, His Word spoken, and with Moses His Word written, and with Christ His Word living, amongst us. And now we have the word of the witnesses who saw all of that. With that word, with the sacraments that flow out of that word, God renews the Holy Spirit in us so that we are His disciples. And our job now is to continue to discipling others to God's glory and the furtherance of His kingdom till Jesus comes. Amen. Thank you.